Have you ever noticed how sometimes two seemingly similar math problems can have drastically different solutions? Take these two quadratic equations, for example, x squared minus 3x plus 2 and x squared minus 4x plus 2. They look almost identical, right? But if we try to find their solutions only using rational numbers, we run into a surprising difference. The first one is easy to factor. It is x minus 1 times x minus 2. So the solutions are 1 and 2, both perfectly good rational numbers. But what about the second one? If we try factoring, we quickly realize it's not going to work with just fractions. Using the quadratic formula, we find the solutions are 2 plus square root 2 and 2 minus square root 2. And here's the catch. Square root 2 is an irrational number. It can't be expressed as a fraction. This raises a fascinating question. What do we do when our usual number system isn't enough to solve our equations? How can we expand our idea of numbers to find these missing solutions? And how does all of this relate to the problem of solving an equation using only roots? In this video, we'll answer these questions by exploring the concept of splitting fields, a way of constructing new numbers that contain the missing solutions. We'll touch on some important mathematical structures called rings and fields along the way. But don't worry, we'll explain everything clearly with examples so you won't get lost in the jargon. So, if you're ready to expand your understanding of numbers and explore some truly mind bending math, stick around. Number systems. So we've seen that sometimes the rational numbers aren't enough to solve our equations. This isn't a new problem in mathematics. Throughout history, mathematicians have repeatedly faced situations where their existing number systems were insufficient, leading them to extend their idea of what a number could be. The original numbers were the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. While these numbers solved the problem of counting, they weren't suitable for representing debts and other situations involving subtraction. This led to the introduction of the integers, which include negative numbers and zero. Similarly, the integers aren't ideal for problems involving division, which prompted the creation of the rational numbers, where division by any non-zero number is possible. Despite their eventual usefulness, these extensions weren't always readily accepted. New types of numbers were often met with skepticism, even resistance. It took time for concepts like negative numbers and even fractions to become widely accepted. The rational numbers, despite their power, still fall short when it comes to solving equations like x squared minus 4x plus 2. So drawing inspiration from the boldness of earlier mathematicians, will push the boundaries of what a number can be. This exploration will lead us to the concept of splitting fields. Polynomials as numbers? Continuing with this spirit of mathematical exploration, let's consider a new perspective on polynomials. We are used to think of polynomials as functions, things that take an input x and give us an output. But what if we shifted our focus? What if we started thinking of polynomials as elements of a new kind of number system? Now, this doesn't mean polynomials are numbers in the same way that 3 or square root 2 are numbers within the familiar number systems we've already discussed. Instead, we are recognizing that polynomials, just like our familiar number systems, have their own consistent rules for how they can be combined using addition and multiplication. Think about it. Just like we add and multiply numbers to get another number of the same type, we can add and multiply polynomials to get another polynomial. Factorizations and solutions. So we've established that we can think of polynomials as elements within a new kind of number system, with its own rules for addition and multiplication. How does this help us with our original problem of finding solutions to polynomial equations? Well, this idea of treating polynomials as elements within a new type of number system opens up a whole new way of thinking about equations. 
In particular, there is a deep connection between finding solutions and factoring polynomials. Let's revisit our earlier example, x squared minus 3x plus 2. When we think of this as a function, we are looking for values of x that make the function equal to 0. These values, 1 and 2, are the solutions or roots of the equation. But now, let's think of x squared minus 3x plus 2 as an element of our polynomial number system. We can ask a different question. Can we factor this polynomial? And indeed, we can. x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals x minus 1 times x minus 2. Notice something important. The factors x minus 1 and x minus 2 directly correspond to the solutions 1 and 2. This is no coincidence. If a polynomial can be factored into linear terms, terms of the form x minus a, then the values a are the solutions to the equation. Now, let's turn our attention to the polynomial that started this whole discussion, x squared minus 4x plus 2. If we try to factor this polynomial using only rational numbers, we hit a roadblock. There are no rational numbers that will allow us to factor it into linear terms. This is where the idea of extending our number system becomes crucial. Just like we extended the natural numbers to the integers to allow for subtraction, and the integers to the rationals to allow for division, we need to extend the rational numbers to a new number system where x squared minus 4x plus 2 can be factored. This new number system will contain the missing solutions to our equation, solutions that aren't present in the rational numbers. This process of creating a new number system to split a polynomial into linear factors is what we call constructing a splitting field. Splitting fields. So we know we need to extend the rational numbers to find the missing solutions to x squared minus 4x plus 2. How do we actually do that? The key idea is what mathematicians call a joining a root. We essentially invent a new number that satisfies our equation. Let's call this new number gamma. We are going to force gamma to be a solution to x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. This means that gamma squared minus 4 gamma plus 2 equals 0. Now, what does this new number gamma look like? We don't know its exact value in terms of rational numbers, because it's not a rational number. But we know it satisfies the equation gamma squared minus 4 gamma plus 2 equals 0. We can rearrange this equation to get gamma squared equals 4 gamma minus 2. This is important because it tells us how to handle powers of gamma. If we encounter gamma squared, we can replace it with 4 gamma minus 2. Let's consider expressions of the form a plus b gamma, where a and b are rational numbers. We can add, subtract, and multiply this expression using the usual rules of algebra, keeping in mind that whenever we see gamma square, we replace it with 4 gamma minus 2. These expressions of the form a plus b gamma form our new number system. We call it q gamma, read as q at joint gamma where q represents the rational numbers. It's an extension of the rational numbers because it includes all the rational numbers when b equals 0, plus these new numbers involving gamma. Our extension seems pretty good so far. We can add, subtract, and multiply elements in this new number system. But did we lose the ability to perform division? The whole point of the rational numbers was to allow us to divide, so if we can't divide in q gamma, our new number system would be a step backward. Let's see if we can divide. Let's take a non-zero element from q gamma, say, a plus b gamma. We want to find its multiplicative inverse, that is, some c plus d gamma such that a plus b gamma times c plus d gamma equals 1. Using the fact that gamma square equals 4 gamma minus 2, we can perform the multiplication and obtain some equation. Solving that equation for c and d, we obtain that the multiplicative inverse of a plus b gamma 
is given by a over a square minus 4ab plus 2b square plus negative b over a square minus 4ab plus 2b square gamma. Now, let's go back to our polynomial x square minus 4x plus 2. In this new number system q of gamma, we can actually factor it. One of the factors is x minus gamma. To find the other factor, we can use polynomial division or notice that since the constant terms of the polynomial is 2, the other root must be 4 minus gamma. Therefore, x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals x minus gamma times x minus 4 minus gamma. We have now successfully constructed a number system q gamma where our polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 2 can be factored into linear terms. A number system in which we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide by non-zero elements is called a field. Since we can perform these operations in Q gamma, and moreover the polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 2 splits into linear factors within Q gamma, we call Q gamma a splitting field for the polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 2. Solution by radicals. We've now seen how to construct a splitting field for the polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 2, which we called q gamma. But how does this connect to the idea of solving equations by radicals? A radical is a solution to an equation of the form xn equals z, where n is a positive integer and c is an element of our number system. For example, square root of 2 is a radical because it's the solution of x squared equals 2. Similarly, the cube root of 5 is a radical because it's a solution to x cube equals 5. Now, the astute viewer will notice that these examples are a little deceptive because they are real numbers but not rational numbers. The real numbers are great, but their construction is a little complicated and out of the scope of the problem we are dealing with. So, how can we construct these radicals if we are not allowed to simply use real numbers? The answer is, we used the same idea of adjoining an element as we did before. Let's consider the equation x squared equals 2. We can create a new number system by adjoining a root of this equation to the rational numbers. Let's call this new root delta. So by definition, delta squared equals 2. We can then consider expressions of the form a plus b delta, where a and b are rational numbers. As we did with gamma, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide these expressions, using the fact that delta squared equals 2 to simplify. This process creates a field, which we denote q delta. This field is called a radical extension of q, because it adds the solution to a radical equation. Now, let's go back to our original polynomial, x squared minus 4x plus 2. We constructed the splitting field of q gamma, where gamma squared minus 4 gamma plus 2 equals 0. But can we find a splitting field for that polynomial using a radical extension? The quadratic formula suggests that x squared minus 4x plus 2 has roots 2 plus minus square root 2. Since we constructed delta such that delta corresponds to a square root 2, we can express these roots in q delta as 2 plus delta and 2 minus delta. Indeed, we can verify that x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals x minus 2 plus delta times x minus 2 minus delta in q delta. This means that the polynomial splits over the radical extension q delta which gives us a more abstract interpretation of solvability by radicals. It's interesting to note that even though we constructed these fields in different ways, by adjoining gamma and by adjoining delta, they are closely related. In fact, they are essentially the same field, just with different labels for the added root. What's next? We've now seen how constructing splitting fields and radical extensions gives us a powerful new perspective on solving equations. But this is just the tip of the iceberg.
Join us next time as we build upon these concepts to uncover the hidden structures that determine whether a polynomial can be solved by radicals. In the meantime, stay mathy.